The first time I saw her, I was 15, and it was at a deal my papa took me to in southern Nuevo Leon in order to introduce me officially to the mechanics of the family business. This wasn't just some deal. This was a big deal. My papa was buying tons of marijuana, and we were going to inspect and approve the transaction which his regional patron had set up. My papa always carried a nickel-plated Colt Combat Commander in 38 Super, shiny as the moon seen through a hand lens. It had, until before this deal, silver cutches or grips, but was now decked out in ivory grips with her carved in bas-relief, wielding scythe, and wearing her cassock get-up, a gift from a connection in Michoacan. Everything was normal, just another day hanging with my papa. Even if it seemed unusual to be taken to a major deal, it was life. The sun was high, the mountain woods closed in around us, and the air smelled of dried cannabis. Suddenly, I could see us, the men with us, and the men from the other cartel all appearing as her, but in different vestments. Cowboy boots and hats, Levi's and shirts with fancy embroidery. My handsome papa neatly trimmed black goatee, his brown eyes hiding layers he'd saved only for himself. His shirt with the marijuana leaves embroidered around the buttons, open-throated. Anchor Christ necklace on his curly-haired chest, colt tucked into his belt. Only the grips with her visible. As we toured the tonnage, I felt her gaze on me from all the eyes around me, all the mar macho narcos fingering AK-47s and colts, their gold marijuana leaf necklaces, customized trucks parked idling, dual exhaust grumbling behind the shipment. It was a moment of revelation being able to see through her eyes, understanding we were all as able as her to wield the scythe without a second thought, reduced to reflex ruthless. I remember it stronger than my first orgasm, given to me by Angel in his pickup truck, him on the floor between my legs, tongue tapping a door I had not known existed, crying out, Epiphany! An angel! A pleasant, perfect, continuous memory. Money was exchange. exchanged. I was not introduced, just accepted without question. The nautical's daughter standing to his side, my long hair in a bun and my eyes behind shaded ray-bands. The farmer's representative and old acquaintance of my papa, Don G., smiled when he saw me. Mijita, you are now a man, he grinned, and I felt his eyes grope my breasts beneath my blouse. My papa grinned ironically at his joke. So you know who you will eventually answer to. I never thought I would be someday answering to a woman, but as you say, Don Puentes, it is not as I say, it is as it will be. Never forget that. My papa patted his shoulder. She will be majestically ruthless in my own fair way, as she is my reflection. I felt myself gaze under the blush under the gaze of my father so full of love for me. I could feel his pride in waves coming off his hand resting lightly on my shoulder. Don G looked at my papa, then at me, raised his eyebrows, shook my head, and kissed my cheek too long. He waved towards the neat bales of marijuana flowers. Beautiful, no? What could I say? Of course. Be sure to pick up Vestige to Visage. Within the covers of this book, I explore nautical culture. I explore the wonders of salvia. I explore many different things, and I think that this book is something you need to have on your shelf. <laughs> so anyways, pick it up at uh, bittenapple.lulu.com. Uh, the links are at the end. That was an excerpt from the title story, Vestige to Visage, about the Santa Muerte and narco culture in Mexico. Vestige to Visage.